I'm DJ Keen. I'm joined by my usual co-host. DJ B. Millie, that's me. And one of my older usual co-hosts has come back to join I us. I was there at the beginning. Uh-huh. When dun, the dun. deep magic... I'm DJ Lunchbox. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Which is actually quite fitting that you're here, because I don't remember if you were actually on that episode or not, but what we're doing today is what I'm calling a reboot episode. At the very beginning, when I first started, almost six months ago now, probably? Yeah, just about. Just about. It would have been last August or September, at least. Uh, it would have been around September, I want to say. Yeah. We were doing a couple of episodes, the first few that were a very different kind of format to what we're doing now. Oh, okay. We were trying a very different, where we were talking over the music and letting it play in the background the whole time during the show. And it just didn't quite feel right in the end. And so later on, I ended up changing the format where we play, do the talk sections, and then have music sections where we just let the music play. And that's when we ended up rearranging different day, different time. Yeah. And that's when Brandon started joining us. So basically, you're saying that your show has been patched. Yeah. You, you've, you've, yeah. you've modified your show. You've used some add-ons. Yeah. Well, honestly, I'm on... We were in the, alpha before. Now uh, we're in beta. So I'm, now all the main I'm characters probably, are running around naked and... Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm probably on Critical <laughs> Hits version 2 point something at least by this point. 2.35. Like, okay, good. So we're still in beta. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We're still Don't in beta. Don't worry about that. <laughs> all right. So, oh, let's get the business. Get our disclaimer out of the way. Yeah. The views, comments, and opinions expressed on this show are those of individuals and not necessarily shared by Griffin Radio, the Media Communications Department, Grossmont College, or the Grossmont Cuyamaca Community College District. This podcast is copywritten by Griffin Radio and Grossmont College 2019. Thank you. I do legitimately believe that we should, this is not part of the show, but just like, I think it would be so easy if we just had that as a soundbite. We could just <laughs> put to that play right on, the before. Ar- on the news array. Yeah, put it on the array, just like as yeah. a soundbite, so that like we could just pre-play it before the show, that way to cover all our bases and not have to worry about it or be like, oh, I forgot to say this. I could knock you know? that out this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <gasps> Does anybody have a child? We could have a child say it. That would sound so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Does the anyone views, have a the child? Views, comments, Does anyone... and opinions expressed on this show. Take that completely out of context. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who has a child? <laughs> Bring me a child. <laughs> I was going to say, does anyone have a child? Exactly. Well, I don't know. People surprise me all the time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I know Latanya's got one. <laughs> what game uh, are we doing today, my yeah. man? Like what I are said, we doing? we're doing a reboot episode, so <laughs> we've kind of done this one before a very very long time ago the game we're going to be covering today is chrono cross Ooh. in the oh, original okay. episode we did kind of a chrono trigger chrono cross and we had a couple songs from each game uh, in this one i'm going to be focusing on the music from chrono cross talk about trigger and even radical dreamers which is something completely different that's a that's kind of a sequel to chrono trigger it's an illustrated text adventure that was created for super nintendo's satella view add-on which I don't know if anyone ever really yeah. used that. Yeah. So it was uh, that one was intended to sort of wrap up some loose plot threads that they left in Chrono mm-hmm. Trigger, but no one really played that. And Cross is kind of doing the same. It wraps mm. up those same sort of plot threads, but it's also its own complete game as well. So just to preface before we like really get into the nitty gritty of the game, what are your guys' experiences with Cross and Trigger? Have we played Chrono Cross and Chrono Trigger ever very briefly, either or, or completely out of the dark? I played through Trigger, I think, later than most people. I don't remember playing it on the original Super Nintendo when it was out, but I played it on, I think, some emulators, and then there's a PlayStation version. I did play it uh, a little later on, and then I played through Cross. I've played through Trigger maybe once or twice, Okay. and Cross maybe a couple of times as well. What about you? I bought Chrono Trigger the day it came out on my Super Nintendo. Wow. And I still have the box in the cart factory fresh. Well, not factory fresh, but like mint condition. That's amazing. At home in my garage in a (laughs) box. And I have played it uh, on the console itself, on the Super Nintendo, once all the way through. And then I think I've played it another two times on emulators uh, Mm -hmm. like you, Keen. Uh, I started Chrono Cross, um, but it kind of came out when... uh, life had begun to happen to me so i Mm -hmm. kind of lost interest plus i could not for the life of me figure out the battle system and it just really pissed me off so i just ended up 
I think I remember you saying that in the first version yeah. of this episode too. But Trigger, uh, <laughs> Trigger, I I really really enjoyed. But oddly enough, the game kind of was a little off-putting to me at first because mm. some of the battle music in the game mm. was to me a derivative of the boss music from Final Fantasy VI. Mm. And so I was like, there's, it's just. At the at the time, obviously the game had just come out, so we didn't realize what a masterpiece it was going to be. Yeah. But so I'm st- I'm starting this new game, and I'm like, well, it it's just top down Final Fantasy with Final Fantasy music. There's nothing different about this, except that it's pretty. Well, they got the Dragon Ball artists to do character yeah. designs. That's a yeah. little different, but. <laughs> and I think this was even before I'd known about Dragon Ball. It yeah. Did, yeah. So I, I I was about 14. Now, just to preface, I am the youngest person in the room. Mm. Typically, when we do these shows, <laughs> typically I'm the you youngest person. No, I typically I'm the like, youngest person. Is Remus the younger than you or older? Than I you? think I think Remus is a little younger than me. Yeah, By maybe really? About I, thought, a year. I thought he was older. He might be. I don't is remember he? whether Remus is younger. Well, or older. Remus has been drinking for a little while, and you just hit that that watermark. I didn't you? I just turned 22. That's right. Okay. I just turned 22. Well, you guys are close. I don't know which one to use them. Anyway, there is a purpose yeah, to this anyway. statement. Basically, <laughs> I to make me feel I bad. very I very briefly my um my friend's older brother had a Super Nintendo and I kind of I played a little bit of Chrono Trigger very briefly. I maybe played through the first third of the game while we were at a family event in their house and None of us wanted to talk to any of the family, so we just went into, <laughs> back into his room and played Chrono Trigger for a little bit. But um, little to no experience with it. I know, mm-hmm. I know it's great. I know it's a JRPG turn-based, mm-hmm. turn-based yeah. action JRPG. No, it's it's just turn-based. Oh, it's it, just turn-based. It appears action-based just because of when you look at the game, it appears to look like a Zelda, just the way it's, okay. it's uh, configured. But it's completely turn-based. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, it uses the it uses pretty much the exact same mechanic as the uh, active time battle from Final Fantasy. Yeah, it's just the you just have a gauge that fills up and different. then you attack. With yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I remember that. But um, yeah, it was. I mean, again, I was really young, so the music wasn't really at the forefront for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there are some very there are some very specific songs that I like remember because I had gotten that far but others that I've never heard before because I never got that far in the game and vice versa. But I am, I'm very respect. <laughs> this sounds so horrible, but like, I can't put it any other way, but I am respectful of my video game elders and Chrono Trigger as hey, a whole. I'll take that. <laughs> respectful of Chrono Trigger and what it has done for the RPG and gaming community. And I know that it has very amazing music mm. and I'm excited to learn more about it because I know little to nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for right. it. If you have a Super Nintendo, well, I mean, I have mine, but you can borrow my Super Nintendo and Chrono Trigger if you want and play the original. Oh, you still have your Super my Nintendo? Good Absolutely, in God. the box. Oh man. I hate to be I hate to be that guy, but that's gonna be worth a lot of money one day. You know what? It's weird. Like my that Super could be Nintendo. Your, that could be your. I'm about to be homeless. Okay, I'll sell this. Sort of a. Like well, I mean, it's not thing. sealed. I've, obviously, I've, I've played yeah, it to death. I mean, still though, uh, still it's gonna be worth a my lot. My Super of Nintendo money. is very strange. The bottom half of it, it, it's kind of like assembled. The two, the top half it, uh, is attached to the bottom half. Yes. The bottom half is turned a very odd color. Well, hmm. yeah, time. I but mean, the top still. half is just fine. I don't know. It's very strange. Different material weird. housing. Ex- Explosion to oxygen and I guess. whatever. And who knows? But the who bottom knows? is like this weird dark yellow color now. Huh. Interesting, really. Yeah. Huh. Well. All right. Let's move into our first block of music. Yay. Um, for this one, I've got Time Scar, which mm. is kind of the <laughs> intro cutscene to the game. Okay, I might it's, I might remember this it's, one. It's one of those ones where if you let it sit on the title screen for a little bit, then it plays this it little cutscene for okay. you. Now this is on cross, right? Cross. Yep. All the music from here is on cross. So we'll get little, oh, okay. so we'll get little light motifs and things like that from Trigger and even Radical Dreamers and stuff like that. Hmm. But all the music from here is on the cross soundtrack. I and love then, Time Scar. Yeah, Time Scars. That's exactly why I put it first. I love that song. <laughs> I remember I would occasionally leave Cross on 
on my PlayStation with a TV I on and just it. sitting at the title screen so while I'm doing other stuff and just let cool. that let that intro play over and over again because I love the cool. song. And I also love the intro, watching Surge fighting with this. That's cool. He, he uses a weapon that's supposedly supposed to be like an oar, like a paddling oar. Yeah. And so it's like a double-bladed weapon kind of thing. That is that is very cool. It I just love that. cool. And then we it. go into Dream of the Shore Bordering Another World, and this is the overworld theme for Another World, which is another thing we'll talk about when we get back, uh, the home world and another world and all that. And then we move into Reminisce Feelings Not Forgotten, and as part of that home world and other world that we'll talk about later, you get a lot of characters in this game which sort of dream about what their life might have been if they'd taken oh. a different path here or there or done something a little differently. Cool. And this is the song that tends to play whenever one of those characters sort of goes into yeah. that monologue about their Very life cool. or whatever. This is the song that tends to play. And then we move on to Lost Fragments, which is sort of just kind of a downer, more sad, depressing tone that tends yeah, to play whenever more sure. sad kind of things or like when you lose someone, when, you know, yeah, for sure, the more for depressing sure. moments happen. So we'll play those four songs, and then we'll be right back to talk about time travel and parallel <laughs> dimensions and just all the nonsense that the Chrono series has created.
almost sneezed. Oh, okay, I was wondering what that face was. No, I almost and sneezed. And welcome back. Hello. How are you liking that music? I really really liked it. Yeah. Very contemplative. Very, very contemporary. And I also like, I also like, as we were talking about, that Mediterranean feel to it. Yeah. That very, like, that very wind instrument mixed with, like, simple string instrument sound. Like, I love that. Like, Zelda and the Ocarina of Time had a very similar soundtrack Mm -hmm. with, like, the wind instruments of the Ocarina and others, and then, like, simple, like, mandolins and strings. Mm. I do, I do very much like that. So, the, the whole game, well... Like I said, a lot of time travel, parallel dimensions, all that sort of stuff. But the whole game effectively takes place in what they call uh, the El Nido Archipelago. Which, yeah. you know, an archipelago, it's just basically a chain of islands. And so you're pretty much confined to that area the whole game. You don't really go to the mainland areas or anything like that. So you're just sailing around to these different islands. And so you get, like, you know, a bunch of natives and then mainland colonists and demi-humans, yeah. which are like part human, part creature, that sort of stuff. Very cool. And so in order to fit that environment mm. that they created, this like chain of tropical kind of islands, they ended up uh, styling it around like old world cultural influences, that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of Mediterranean styling there. There's a uh, Fado, Celtic, percussive African type stuff. I feel like I feel like video games often do that very successfully. Um, and don't quote me on this because this is just my opinion, but I also feel like Japanese games in particular mm. very well play off of that like let's take this culture, yeah. this like area of the world and make this section of the game like this kind of music, this kind of environment because mm. I I know for a fact that like Pokemon does it very well consistently where they take like a region of the world and they take kind of like that music because Sun and Moon just de- recently did it with like Polynesian Islands and Hawaii mm-hmm. yeah. and stuff like that so I did I did get that kind of vibe that you're talking about where they'll like take kind of I do feel like I'm associating it more than with a game because I haven't played it but like an area of the world like yeah. a culture of it because of the sound of the music and that vibe that it kind of gives me that very simple like Mediterranean vibe of music. Yeah, there's a number of different uh, composers that can do that sort of thing yeah. very well, but you are right. That seems to come out of Japanese games a lot more often than it does Western and, games. And they do it very, very well. Yeah. Because they're, they're like, oh, so let's get a bunch of like yeah. the popular and the traditional and the cultural and the exactly. folk type music from this area that's very similar to the world, the, the place the style that we're going for and just listen to it and listen to it and listen to it and then start incorporating ideas and concepts get that sound get that sound idea in our heads Mm -hmm. and then see if we can replicate it into our own original tracks and they usually do it very well and it sounds like they did it very well in chrono cross because it did very much sound not just like mediterranean but also sounded very like video game vibe and like Mm -hmm. action packed at some points and then like okay let's calm down for this cutscene at some points So, like, Japanese video game culture, like, does that extremely well. Yeah. Like, they usually end up doing that very, very well, where they'll take an area of the world and just kind of, like, take that culture and that music and put it into their game. Well, just tangentially, uh, I mean, uh, in that same kind of vein, like, with the Dark Souls series, Mm. you wouldn't really think that it was a Japanese developer because, to me at least, the game, the architecture, the the vibe and everything feels so... Mediterranean, so yeah. or not Mediterranean, medieval, medieval, uh, medieval European, European, Europe, sort of, European, the yeah. ruins. I mean, it, it feels like a yeah. Western developer because the sensibilities appear to be so authentic. But it, you know, it's a it's a completely Japanese company. Then they just said, "Screw it, we're doing a medieval game," and they did. They do yeah. their research and they do it well consistently. Yeah. So as we were talking about before, when I was having a mental break before <laughs> we went to the first block yeah. of music, yeah. is. Um, so starting with Chrono Trigger mm-hmm. on Super Nintendo, mm-hmm. way back when, uh, the whole game was centered around the idea of time travel. Right? Okay. Your characters sort of accidentally end up going through time, and then they find out some horrible cataclysmic disaster that's going to happen, and I they choose to con- they choose to continue traveling through time to try and prevent that from happening. Right. Mm-hmm. So what you end up with is Chrono Cross is kind of a carryover from that idea. The the constant time traveling and the altering of the timeline has ended up creating some very weird events, sort of. Yeah. Right? And so the basic, this is where it gets mind freak-ish. <laughs> yeah. The basic idea behind Chrono Cross is 
two primary worlds, parallel worlds. Okay. One's known as home world, one's another world. Okay. Very it's simple literally naming. Called, it's literally called another world. Not by the people in that world, but you'll understand more As, when you okay. get the character. Okay. Because the idea is that these two parallel worlds seem to have diverged 10 years before the game started with an event in which someone tried to drown the main character when he was a kid. So home world. Huh. So home world, he lives, he survives, he he continues having a life. That's in this little village, another world. He drowns and be- actually that's why perishes. It, that's why it's called another world because in that world he's dead. Wow! And so he shows up and everyone's like, "Who are you?" And then when they start finding out who he is, like, "Is this some ghost or something? What's going on?" That's very cool. Wow! <clears throat> yeah, and so you end up with these two uh, primary different yeah. parallel worlds that yeah. happen, and a lot of what happens. I don't want to say too much because it all leads very much into spoilers, but a lot of what sort of builds up, the, him, yeah. him drowning is the big split point, but there is a reason why he's so important to the timeline and why him living or dying would create two different worlds. Yeah. And all of that ties back to events which carry over from the things that happen in Trigger, right? The stuff that happened in Trigger, all the messing with the timeline, ended up creating something else which affected this character, which caused his death to Gosh. break the world like that sort of thing. Especially with time travel, like, if you do it well and you make the game well, you've just got, like, an infinite amount of possibilities. Yeah. Like, you literally can just do anything. And then the the really interesting part, and this is the part that I was going nuts over, <laughs> was... <laughs> Beyond okay. just having two parallel worlds, you then have like other pieces of other timelines that are getting pulled in. Like because he's so important, because his death can create such a break in the timeline. Okay. You also have this weird situation in which sort of a bunch of different timelines are kind of like circling a drain around this point almost. Okay. And so you end up getting like here's this futuristic city from the future of all this future oh, tech that's okay. been pulled into this world. Here's this weird, like, hyper-advanced reptilian society that's been okay. pulled in from this world, and now, like, they're in home in another world, and they're hidden, or they're destroyed, or they're, you know. So, so Like, other timelines beyond the two worlds seem yeah. to be sort of getting dragged in and affecting it even more. I see. So it's basically, like, here's home world here's another world and then like here's a piece of this world if like lizard people took over it and yeah here's a piece of this world so, if it was super future yeah, i see the only mean. two worlds that you end up going to are home and another, another but you get pieces that seem not to be from either I of see. those timelines I see. or at the very least not from those periods of time okay. getting sort of dragged into those worlds as well in in the most convoluted and not understanding way that kind of makes sense yeah especially with <laughs> especially with like a time travel premise mm-hmm. like it does it is kind of a not a cop out way but for lack of a better term a cop out way of like adding different elements to it like mm. You know, like, oh, we can only do so much with just the Earth as is, so let's add some lizard enemies by saying, oh, if, like, it was affected in this way, maybe, like, a fragment of that world is getting yeah. affected by this. It is it is a very, like, smart... And that's very, that's very much what you end yeah. up with. Because okay. it does stuff like, well, if... In the events of the original Chrono Trigger, if mm. we hadn't been able to do such and such, then we would have gone about it this way. And then that's you get cool. this super high futuristic technology very, city very cool. that's trying to sort of solve a problem that was in Chrono Trigger that they maybe wouldn't have been able to solve themselves. Mm. But then if you create that city and then through its experiments, it screws up and ends up throwing itself back in time. And so it exists in that time period. And then it's not supposed to be there. And so to like offshoot it, like yeah. fate or nature or whatever sort of pulls this dinosaur mm-hmm. lizard folk type city in as well so you get that's this high cool. technology high nature sort of like they're offsetting each other that's a that's another thing that i've noticed about um some older um not just older japanese games but older just video games in general i feel like if the concept of those games was taken and like put into today's era that it would just be like the best thing in the world like the graphics the graphics that we have today and the potential that we have today with that just base simple storyline of like here's your world if you lived here's your world if you died have fun exploring through both but like with the technology we have for graphics that would be an amazing one (laughs) 
just like because you know these ideas had never been thought of before for mm-hmm. like Chrono Trigger and like you know simpler games like Legend of Zelda and stuff like that where it was just because video gaming was so new mm-hmm. it was like oh okay here's a simple idea I have that's never been thought of before well, Let's Link to the Past, there. they had the light in the dark world. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, here's this simple idea of traveling between two worlds in a different timeline, so let's put it into a game. And nowadays, you know, not to diss because I'm part of the newer gaming generation, so not to diss on newer storylines, but now it's like, here's 87 different worlds and 35 different characters, all of which have their own backstory and all of which have their own <laughs> before you program. Before you I know what you're about to do. Steven. Would you like to tell us how many characters there are in Chrono in Chrono Cross? Forty five. Forty five characters. Playable party members. And how many were there in Sweet Coden two? Uh, I think in every single Sweet Coden game, there's a hundred and eight stars, but I don't think they're all playable characters. Okay, so oh, I thought they were all playable. I don't so think they're to, all able to be added to the party, but usually close to a hundred of them are. Well, that is hilarious. So, but, but that to, ties <laughs> that ties into the story. Did, did you Cross, like that kind of smug hang on a minute kind of finger? Yeah. The, ar- to, the archer, one moment, please. Chrono Cross, it's a little idiotic to do that with yeah. with Suiko. Then the hundred and eight stars of destiny ties into the storyline of all the games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it makes a little sense, but still, that's a lot of but characters. But to to retort the retort. <laughs> <laughs> and and to kind of oh, retort, bring it bring it and to kind of retort myself honestly it is cool to have a lot more characters than mm-hmm. just the main character to worry about but you know because in, i mean in legend of zelda you're link right but in chrono cross and chrono trigger i'm sure you could be one of like five or six or even 40 characters yeah but from the practical point of point of view but, though yeah. they don't all level together but yeah, it's not like yeah. the newer games where your whole party gets to gets yeah. to uh, grow together. So you had to choose the older games. You had to basically pick your core team. But having to having going through this and picking out the songs and thinking more about the game. And honestly, I've been inspired to pick up the game and play it again after this. So amazing. Just I from really going through the really songs. want to go home and play Cross now. Yeah, <laughs> um, I love it. it. it game, I still have Chrono Cross it, on the PS One, by the way. It created this new idea. Idea that I have in tying to you the idea of what could we do with graphics and stuff the mm-hmm. way they are today mm-hmm. that I want to run by you as someone who has played a little bit of Cross. I know you hated the battle system and it's made you sort of bounce off the game. It was one of those things where I think if I had been patient and given it a chance, you just, uh, but sim- since it wasn't simple like the Chrono Trigger I had mm. played where you just simply clicked attack and attack, instead you had to sort of build these uh, things. Yeah, thing. you, you just it was need more to, complicated than I wanted it to be. You uh-huh. just need to focus on the stand stamina that your characters have and how that allows you to build up levels and how that allows you to cast magic if you can wrap your head kind of around those things it makes a lot more sense but the idea that i ended up having and i wanted to run by you is what if we do a full remake of cross these days with the kind of graphics and technology and storytelling capability Mm -hmm. we have these days we knock it down to seven eight maybe nine main characters and all of the rest of the 45 characters that in a lot of cases really felt like side characters anyway they are side characters they maybe join your party as a guest while you're dealing with their storyline but you don't have to take them with you everywhere in the game i'm a, I'm a purist when it comes to remakes yeah i i don't believe in shaving off the warts that mm. the game originally came with um it, it it almost seems to uh, like a, it's it's a lie to me mm-hmm. because you're taking something that happened back in ye olden days and saying, oh, well, that horrible thing, that never happened. You know, to, to people who, the new generation of people who might buy a game. Say, for example, when they released Chrono Trigger on Steam and they changed a whole bunch of stuff in the game and then they yeah. released that. And it's like, oh, well, here's Chrono Trigger. Well, you got to be honest. That's Chrono Trigger 2.0. That's not the same game. Well, there was also the... I don't remember if it was the was it the handheld release of Chrono Trigger or the PlayStation release of Chrono Trigger where they added a 13th ending to the game. Mm, probably the PC release cuz I, I don't think it was the PC release. I think it was either the console or the handheld, the Nintendo DS or the PlayStation. Uh then release. I'm not uh, then I'm not certain about that. Well, I think they put in a yeah. 13th ending that I think more closely I was supposed to tie it to Cross, but I don't know how well it did. See, that, to me I don't I, like that. That uh, <laughs> I'm just a purist. We yeah. we do live we do live currently in a nostalgia era. Oh, a lot of God, a lot of people yes. are cashing in on nostalgia, doing remakes of television shows, movies, games that some of them are good. Like like for example, 
to say that not all of them are bad. Like, I think a really successful one was the Crash Bandicoot trilogy that mm-hmm. they just re-released. Mm-hmm. It was literally just Crash Bandicoot, all of those games, but with a little updated graphics so that it's playable to get through on today's consoles. Now, that I'm I fine with. Graphic updates is fine. Just a, just a graphic update. Here's the game. Here's what it was. Let's make it cleaner so that this generation can play it without looking at it like it's fuzzy or weird. Well, and a lot of times, too, in my experience, that's a practical move because, for example, Final Fantasy XII, when it came out, great game, played it on a a CRT Mm -hmm. monitor at at the time, but I've tr- I broke out my PS2, popped in the game, and I'm I have it on a, a HD TV. I can't see a thing. The 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 high def completely yep. screws up the old 480 graphics. So when they released uh, re-released Final Fantasy 12 uh, on the PS4, oh, I lost my mind. I was so damn happy because I could play the game and see what was happening. So again. then that raises the question: How do you feel about the Zodiac job system? Hated it. You hated it? Hated it. You would have liked to have them be able to learn whatever, whenever, however, like they did in the original? I felt so boxed in. I felt so trapped. (laughs) And I sat there staring at the screen for like 10 minutes with each character trying to, and going over game facts, trying to figure out what the (laughs) optimal one is because, Uh, anyway, I don't want want to go down that side road. What's what's the meta for each of these characters? (laughs) And and I don't, and I'm not that kind of player. Yeah. But now that the game had forced that on me, now I had to become that person. Otherwise, I felt that the rest of the game would have had a diminished experience. So. So I don't want to get too granular in that because yeah. there may be people who have absolutely no idea what the hell we're talking about when it comes to that. And but I yeah, also... I don't think I'm as much of a purist as you are in that I don't mind too much if they change little mm. things here or there. As long as the changes work well. That being said, on 12, the Zodiac job system, I feel the same as you. I don't like being boxed in. I'd like them to be able to learn whatever skills I oh, want them to learn. A friend of mine and I were both. We got it at the same time back in the old days, 12 mm. on the PS2. We're, we're huge gamer friends together. When we found out that they had switched the job system, we the both of us just like our top of our heads came off. We were so upset. Mm. To, to not – to give one last tangent but also to get back onto <laughs> Chrono Cross yeah. um, because I can't get yes, there. Yes, please bring us back to the point. Basically, <laughs> basically um, we do live in a nostalgia era, but I think for gamers of the purest type, like they are also coming out with World of Warcraft Classic is coming out. Uh, and yeah. they have, they have yeah. decided to release patches as they came out with World of Warcraft. So like your first day of it, like you can only get up to this certain raid, and then in a couple months you can get up to this raid, and then in a couple months you can get up to this raid right Wait, before we do vanilla. With World of Warcraft, Warcraft Classic, yeah. they're gonna have it out like in the. Fo- is it just raids and things, or is it actually like patches and fixes and bug fixes and it's, stuff like that um, too? Pa- they said certain patches and fixes and bug fixes. Like they won't allow you to go into restricted areas with mm. like wall jumping and stuff and like cliff jumping, but also like they, I think. Again, don't quote me on this, but I think they're adding like certain, um, certain like quests that had problems, but mm-hmm. they're keeping those problems because like some of them made them doable, and some of them made it fun as a player experience because you had so, to like cheese it a little bit with your friends to make it actually work. And yeah, stuff. they were kind of rites of passage. So, so they're gonna keep they're gonna keep out the game breaking stuff, yes. but they're going to allow some of the other yes. stuff that just sort of progress that to make way it more. as authentic because okay. in in the first release of the game you can only get up to, I believe, um Anixia's Lair hmm. and Firelands. But in the next raid you can get to AQ twenty and AQ forty. And then after that, and so on and so forth. Yeah, because those those were content patches. Yeah, so Mm -hmm. so basically there is a nostalgia era, and that's something that touches on it. And I feel like because we're in a nostalgia era, there are purists that are like, I want this patch right now, and I want it as is, and I want these bugs. And there are those that are like, why would you have like a bug that could let you walk into a wall? I don't care how much of a purist you are, that's just dumb to have. Yeah. Like, why would you want to have that? But also to get back to Chrono Cross and like the point that I was trying to make and to kind of co- contradict my own point after <laughs> some thought, at, after some thought and after listening you're allowed to you guys. To have, you're allowed to evolve on your opinion. Yeah, okay. and evolve on my opinion because I took a theater class here at Grossmont because we have an amazing theater class. But they talked about how in today's day and age, how video games were actually ahead of it. They specifically said this was like, people don't want just a main character anymore. Mm. They don't want just, here's the character, here's the maiden, go save her, done. They want the side characters with their own stories. They want the comedic relief. They want a side character that's almost as much of a hero as the character, you know? Especially in, like, examples of, like, Avengers and superhero movies and stuff like that. Like, it's not just about Iron Man and his 
would be superhero friends that are helping him out. It's Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, Thor, uh, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, all of these characters and all of their stories and how all of them come together. So I would assume that in Chrono Cross, that if they did it well, which again, I haven't played the game, so I can't speak to the validity of not doing it or doing it. But if you have 45 characters and have that many options to play, your experience has got to be different when you go to this game. Because with those options, like people's preferences, like just as, as an example, if you played Chrono Cross and you played the main character, and I was just like, I don't know, I don't like the Chrono Cross's main character's red hair because that bothers me. Blue. So I don't, blue hair, <laughs> so, because that really <laughs> bothers me. So I, as a player, when I come to school, I'm like, oh, I threw the main character out like two weeks ago. I don't play with the main character in my party. It's like, oh, you don't? So how do you like beat it? Oh, I've got these spells set up here, these spells set up here. So when you go with 45 different character options to make your party, yeah, some won't be as good as others, but like when you go to school with your friends or like when you hang out with your friends, it's like, oh, you use these four characters? Because I use these four completely oh, different Oh, yeah, I mean, that creates a whole range of conversations. People are like, oh, well, what, who do you prefer? Because everybody has their own different play style. And to get back to the music, Anyone <laughs> except Mojo and Poshal. I am not going to use the giant and to get, uh, uh, wicker man to get back to the guy purpose, or the giant dog. To get back to the purpose of the show, does each of the 45 characters have like their own song or like their own theme uh, or something? I don't know or that do each, they... I don't think each of them has their own song. I was gonna say, that's Most be of a them lot. have their own kind of backstory and their own little story that's going on. That's fair. A lot of them aren't nearly as important as the main characters are. I mean, yeah. But what you're saying about people don't just want a main character. Yeah. That can even go back as far as Chrono Cross cuz I'd say this game is probably as much kids story as it is Surge oh, story. That's what I'm saying. As well. That's what I'm saying is like cuz my class was saying that like old school stories and video games are so ahead of their time because they're so ahead of the narrative of like okay here's your main character. It's like video games haven't been doing that for a while. Well, uh, besides it, like Mario that have like okay, it's got to be Mario, but even Mario like Oh, Luigi too? He's got a brother? I thought this was just a Mario game. And now Luigi has his own mansion games, and he's got he's part of the like Super Mario Bros. games and stuff like that when it was only Mario. And it's like, you've got to cash in on the fact that some people like the underdog, and yeah. some people like the fact that they don't have to use the main character. Well, you know? a, a lot of the older games were so limited technologically, mm -hmm. what they could do graphically, so they to really draw people in they had to rely heavily on story exactly and a lot of that too which is something i mourn the loss of these days is they used Ooh. to come with manuals mm -hmm. oh. which would have all kinds of backstory and really interesting artwork like concept art uh <laughs> and so manuals. like for example the original legend of zelda game you just drop into the game and you have no context. You have no idea what the hell's going on. You just kind of start Figure walking it out. around. Figure You're just it a out. guy standing around in a forest and there's a cave nearby. <laughs> but then you start learning about the story because technologically, it's a very simple game. Up, down, left, right, and you've got you know a handful of weapons and that's it. Gosh. Uh, it. But the story is what really drives you. The maiden kidnapped by the wizard mm -hmm. who's got the, got the Triforce and so she hides it from him. I mean, it's all this extra stuff that's going on sort of behind the scenes Love that it. you find out about this today games have been so hyper focused i would say Visual. since like the ps2 on uh, visual photorealistic mm -hmm. and so they're more focused on the way a game looks rather mm -hmm. than what the game is about mm -hmm. and kingdom hearts for example is a great example of that i think because yeah they spent you know, the last couple of years making three and it's like yeah. yeah it's a pretty game it looks great they took all the stuff from the original games and they zhuzhed it up and it's all really pretty now but mm -hmm. the story is just word salad incomprehensible oh, yeah. it's garbage. a convoluted mess it's a convoluted mess and it's all like right. if you guys had spent just a half of the amount of time you spent yeah. on the graphics writing the story we could have had a nice send-off but For no sure. so anyway i'm bitter about that all right <laughs> Enough of our tangents for bitch, now. Bitch, 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 <laughs> We'll move into our second block of music, which we start off with Leaving the Body. And this is about halfway through the game. Mm -hmm. A big story event happens. Mm -hmm. This is the song that plays during that. Next, we have People Imprisoned by Destiny. This is used in a couple different places in the game for sort of general sadness, depressing sort of stuff. But the primary point is like a group of people you were looking for and eventually you do find them. Oh. It's not what you wanted it to be. Uh, so Okay. 
uh, that's where it's used there. And then we have Star Stealing Girl. And so Trigger was all about time travel. Cross is all about multiple dimensions. There's only one event in all of Cross where you travel through time. And uh, there's other songs that play during that. But near the yeah. end of that, you're about to get pulled back to your own time. And you're kind of leaving oh. someone behind that you really don't want to leave behind on their own Dang. kind of thing, right? You're not going to be able to be there for them. And See, this is cool. the song that plays during that. So it's really sort of melancholy oh, and just... It. It's very beautiful, this song. Love it. All right.
Sorry. <laughs> We're back. Sorry. It's like, shut up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Quiet, be Millie. My bad. Sorry. I could talk forever. You do get yammering, don't you? I know. I could talk forever. <laughs> How'd you like that last one? Again, I always love the like softer songs because mm-hmm. like this block of music usually, dependent upon the game, it ends up being very, very chill, very like calming. Uh, I think that was yours. Yeah. That was. Got I'm it? sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. But it ends up being very calming. So that like, that like mandolin of just like, it just kind of gets me in a, uh, okay. Mm. Not everything has to be Michael Bay explosions. There are some (laughs) video games that have just a soft little intermission. Are are you insinuating that subtlety, (laughs) subtlety is, is an adequate storytelling device? I would never, ever insinuate that. You're a madman. All I'm saying is I don't want to sit on the side of the desk with you anymore. (laughs) I don't feel safe. (laughs) I do feel like that's a concept that's lost, though, very yeah. obviously, in today's, like, explosion Michael yeah. Bay era. You know? Everything's yeah. got to be, like, fast. It's all got to be a huge spectacle. Exactly. Uh, one thing I really love, especially with the music in mm-hmm. Cross, is because of the fact that you have two different worlds, right? Yeah. One where your character lived and one where your character died. They really took that theme a lot. You don't have the same music in both worlds. In the home world where your character lived, you get a lot of brighter songs. Not always upbeat, happy, but brighter. All right. So when you go to another world where your character died, you end up with a lot of like dark, moody types of songs, that sort of thing. And it's just the idea that they didn't just make as much music as they needed for this game they made almost double yeah. the amount of tracks yeah. they really needed to make for it so just a so just a quick question to get my like image in my head ready so is home world just like kind of regular earth ish and then another world is like apocalyptic or no, is it no, no, just no. a world that doesn't have no. you in it and like certain it, things are changed home world both worlds are still the el nido archipelago so okay. it's an island chain yes. they're very very similar okay So you get things like um, in another world, no one in the village knows who you are because your character died 10 years ago and they all think he's dead and no one really grew up with him or anything like that, right? And then you get this military organization further up to the north and they're preparing for what they think is going to be an invasion by one of the mainland armies, stuff like that. And then you go to home world later on in the game and you find out that like the mainland army already invaded and captured that area and they're in control of it now and you know so it's slight differences and variations people neither one's really like post-apocalyptic or anything like that they're both still kind of thriving and all that that's even it's just sort of people living different lives in the different worlds that's even better right for sure like a guy who's this really brash really swashbuckling pirate and all courageous and stuff in one world and it turns out he's like this washed out drunk gambler oh, who God. runs like a cruise ship and cheats people out of their money in the other version <laughs> because of some okay, tragedy from his past stuff like that <laughs> i'm sorry but that's like actually kind of funny like it's almost like <laughs> it's almost like king arthur in one world and then he's like a peddling peasant that like sells things out of his trench coat you are in a the cruel other man. <laughs> yeah, that's almost exactly what it ends up that's being. That's very funny. You meet multiple people throughout the course of the game where it's like, well, this person has this great life in this one world. In this other one, they died five years ago. Or in this one, that's they're living funny. a terrible little life where they dream of the life oh, they could have had, which is the Jesus. exact life they're living in the other world or something. It's like somebody in Japan watched It's a Wonderful Life and decided to make a whole video game out of it with 45 <laughs> characters. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, there are some weird and interesting characters like I was telling you about like this straw puppet life human sized straw puppet that's like um what is it like a voodoo doll basically he's got like a needle through his stomach and that's one of your playable characters and a a giant dog creature that you could put in your party and a a skeleton that's somehow still alive and dressed like a jester I remember the skeleton one yeah it's another thing that like not to just go back on how well Japanese culture like does this but like and not to get anime on you but like this is the best example I can think (laughs) of but like I mean (laughs) again for our listeners just this is how my thought process is going with how he's explaining this but like I mean they just do it so well like you know like Naruto has its Sasuke Mm. you know like 
newer ones too like um Midoriya with My Hero Academia has its Todoroki you know there are characters that or Bakugo or Bakugo you know yes two they of have, them they have characters basically the way that Japanese culture is making this work or like Goku has its Vegeta mm-hmm. you know like they make characters and they make them have a purpose but the fans love them so much that like they just become a bigger part of the story and like in Chrono Trigger with this many side characters and like you said before there well, were two Cross. characters Trigger had or Chrono Cross nine. seven Chrono Cross was it seven I think it was seven. Oh yeah wait it was a very Chrono, small cast Chrono Marl, Luca Frog Robo Magus Isla yeah seven I don't think there were yeah it was very nine. small seven but, but Cross as you said you were talking about like you think it's as much this character story as it is this character story mm. so it's like having just two yeah. a lot of the others are very side there are some but that still. are important there are some that are very side but like the main two Surge who's the character you play as and Kid who's this thief girl that it you is, work with I think it's just as much it either is of their story just a thematic trope that works everybody loves to pick a side <laughs> team Edward team Jacob you know <laughs> People love to pick sides and tell you why their side is right and why your side is wrong. And not necessarily that Chrono Cross does this, because again, I've never played it, Mm. but it's just a theme that works, you know? Give me two characters and let me pick my side and let me hate the other side and let me tell you why. Okay. We need to... (laughs) It's three o'clock. The station's going to shut down around us, so we need to... (laughs) Yeah, the doors are going to lock on us, so we will go ahead and jump right into our third block of music. And try and get ourselves under control. Oh God, I get I I have to get out of here, guys. I have to go home now. Yeah, we're pretty do much done. Do. Once we come back, we'll just say our farewells and get to the outro afterwards. Okay, anyway, that's fine. So. I'll, I'll stick around for that. All right. So for the third block of music, I have Dream Watch of Time. Now this is the title music. As I said, a cutscene will play if you leave it on the title. But this is the music that actually <laughs> plays on the title screen itself. Sorry, Justin's just. And then we move on to Dragon God, which is kind of like the final boss of the game. There is one more boss after this, but uh, depending on how you've gone through the game, it can be more of a puzzle than an actual fight, how you solve that final boss. So this is Dragon God, and this is the boss battle theme for that fight. And then we have Life Far Away Promise. And this is during that final boss fight, which can be more of a puzzle than an actual boss fight. If you do it correctly and you solve the puzzle, then you get this music playing while it's like, woo, big triumph, and it's amazing. Cool. All right. So we will do that, and then we'll come back in about 10 minutes or so for the last farewells or whatever. Just our goodbyes, and we will let you go. Yep. All right.
Hello. Ooh. Oh, hi -o. Our last nice little block of music there. When we do get to our outro, it'll probably sound a little familiar because it's basically the same song as that last song in mm -hmm. the previous block. Yeah. But this one has the lyrics and it's the one that plays during the credits yeah, and that sort for of sure. stuff. So. God, fun episode today. That yeah. was a fun one. A very, very topically appropriate. It always <laughs> ends once. up. It always ends up being. <laughs> I don't know. It's been it always ends up being that way. We'll always go on a tangent that's very mm. like appropriate for today's day and age because a lot of the games that you pick are on the older side. Not in all of them though, because we've yeah. got like our near automatas, near automatas yeah. and stuff like that. So, but some of the older games will usually end up like playing into today's gaming age, and I find those very very interesting as somebody that's like on the newer side of the gaming. Mm -hmm. and that didn't experience the older side of the gaming talking to like one or two people that actually did experience the older end of I gaming. mean not to s not to sound like the way back in my day no, yeah. kind of <laughs> but, but it's true there's a lot of gems that just simply have fallen by the yeah. wayside that people have you know forgotten for one reason or another I mean the technology's obviously moved on yeah um, yeah some of it's not even you know uh, compatible anymore it's difficult in some yeah. cases to find like an old um Art, you know, RCA cable to hook up your, mm. you know, Super mm -hmm. Nintendo or P yeah. PlayStation. So I mean, a lot of it's difficult, and um, emulators are the way to go. And then also, yeah. there's the e shops where you can find some of these older games. But a lot of people will look at these 25 year old games and say, "I am not paying 10 bucks for that." Yeah, um, you're missing out. And even the change in structure can even affect us to some degree. Like I was saying to B Millie earlier on, is um, having played so many real time so many action type games these days i myself as someone who grew up on this stuff find it a little difficult to go back and play like atb or weight or turn based yes. games um yeah in some cases if you're going to play that you got to just crank the wait time yeah. all the way down mm. so asking anyone who it's arbitrary. asking anyone who was born like after some of these games were made to go back and do that would be almost impossible sometimes well i thought final fantasy 10 sp uh, split the difference perfectly because yeah. you still had your turn-based combat, mm. but there was no artificial um, timer that slowed down the battle. You just simply went in order, and you could change the order by doing Didn't certain they combat. they have the order on the screen as yeah. well for you to keep track of? It would have like little pictures of you and the monsters up somewhere. Yeah, it had the order of like, what, what was about to happen. This is who's going to go next. So you could stun something, and then you know if the enemy was about to kill you, you could knock them back in the line. I mean, so yeah. there, it, it wasn't set in stone, but there was no artificial like, okay, I'm waiting. Mm. Rather than waiting, waiting for an ATB gauge or something to fill up, yeah. it would be, here's the order that's going to happen. You can affect that order. So, yeah, I mean, nowadays that we have so freaking many other games <laughs> and diversions of our attention yes. uh, demands that we just don't have the time, to, the luxury to sit there watching an ATB gauge. It's like, dude, I hate to rush this game, but you got to speed the hell up because I got... <laughs> Four other games stacked up Something behind you like, waiting to go. Let's go home and play an hour of Devil May Cry 5, and then let's play an hour of Final Fantasy 4. <laughs> but this wasn't about Devil May Cry. <laughs> this is about Chrono <laughs> yeah, we, Cross. This, yeah, we just get and stuck And this on is these. some old school gaming, and this is not really an ATB gauge and uh, not exactly a turn-based battle system. It goes into characters having stamina and using up certain amounts of stamina mm. before enemies can attack, and... It gets a little complicated, but it's not too hard to understand the battle system. As long as you can wrap your head around characters having stamina that you use up based on how uh, vicious of an attack you try to unleash takes more stamina, and as you use up different attacks, you build up a gauge that lets you use different levels of magic. <clears throat> so, hmm. not too difficult to wrap your head around, but definitely a little more than your average Final Fantasy turn-based old-school game. I really need to give Chrono Cross a shot. Yeah. I've got it on my emulators. I've got it on my the disc PS1. Mm. I just really need to take a swing at it. Mm. It is. It is a fun game. I, uh, I don't know if I've played it more than Trigger. I may have, though. Uh, partially because there's more variation in Trigger. You can easily get all the characters on a playthrough. In Chrono Cross, it's physically impossible to get all the characters on a single playthrough. Oh, wow. There are characters that are, like, root-specific, where it's like, did you choose to go with this person, or did you choose to wait and meet up with them later? Well, yeah. you're not going to meet this character. Did you choose to go this way and try to get this item, or did you choose to try and just go this way and do this instead? Then you're root specific characters on those For two sure. paths gotcha. that hmm. sort of thing 
So you have to do multiple playthroughs if you want all of them because you can at one point eventually on like your second or maybe third playthrough have every character in the game in your party through some you know magical shenanigans where you can like unlock characters you've had in in a new game plus you can unlock characters you've had previous playthroughs at after about the halfway point of the game Mm. so all right well I hate to be the one to end my own, not my own show early, but the doors are, <laughs> the doors are going to lock on Your us here presence. pretty oh, soon. I think already. the doors have already locked on us, so okay, it's a good thing good. we have all our stuff with us. Yeah, so. <laughs> we just have to make sure we get it all and take it yeah. all with us. All right. This has been Critical Hits. We have been covering Chrono Cross today. It's a beautiful game. It's wonderful. And Sounds amazing. The last song I'm going to play for you guys is an amazing song. Really? I love it a lot. And uh, that is going to be called Radical Dreamers Unstealable Jewel. And it's the final like ending theme song of the game. Um, but that'll be it for us for this week. I've been DJ Keen and I've been joined today by. You go first. Oh, me? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm DJ Lunchbox. And I am DJ Bimilly. That is me. <laughs> it's a little catchphrase I gotta find or something. Out, I gotta find out where this is coming from. At that what, point, what, well, he's, been, he's been doing it as long as I've known DJ him. JB Miller, that's me. That's me. <laughs> All right, guys, we will see you. Should be next week. Yeah. Tchau,